When I start teaching about After Effects' 3D capabilities, once I get into the concepts of Z-Space, a lot of my students ask why a layer has a Z-Scale property when changing that value doesn't seem to do anything. If you've ever tried to scale just the Z-Scale on a layer, you've probably noticed no change at all. The layer doesn't change size, which is kind of odd, and if you didn't know any better, you'd think that the feature didn't work. But since After Effects' layers are perfectly flat and have no depth, Doubling the Z-Scale, for example, will do nothing because, well, nothing doubled is still nothing. But there are a few cases where Z-Scale actually does something, and in some of those cases, it can be pretty cool. The first situation, which isn't all that useful, deals with the layer's anchor point. Most of the time, people work with anchor points in 2D. Since a layer scales relative to its anchor point, if I were to move a layer's anchor point to its corner, when I tried to scale the layer, the layer would scale towards or away from the corner. By the way, as you can see, this also applies to rotation as well. And if the anchor point were moved off of the layer altogether, it would work in the same way. Let's take that a step further into 3D when we take the anchor point and move it off the layer pushed out into Z-space. By that, I mean that the anchor point has a Z-axis value of more or less than zero. If I scale the layer on its z-axis, as you can see, it moves towards or away from its anchor point. The next situation where z-scale actually does something is with regard to layers that are parented to other layers. Here I have some solid layers, a red, a green, and a blue. And as you can see here in the parenting column, the red and blue layers are both children of the parent layer, the green solid. Since the children layers are directly in front of or behind the parent layer on the z-axis, if I play with the z-scale for the green parent layer, the children move closer or further away from the parent layer. Again, this isn't necessarily super useful, but it might come in handy. Finally, and this is my favorite use of z-scale, is when you have a 3D composition that you nest in another 3D composition. Here's a simple example. I have some text here that I've made into a 3D layer and then duplicated it many times. If I nest this 3D composition in another 3D composition, well, at first there's really not much going on. Right now it's a flat layer. Even though it is a 3D composition, After Effects treats it like any other footage we drop into a 3D comp, a flat two-dimensional layer. If we hit the Collapse Transformations button here, the layer expands into a full 3D composition. However, it's not yet a full 3D layer. If we take a look at our scale property, we'll see that it still only has the scale for the X and Y axes. To fix that, simply make it a 3D layer by turning on its 3D layer switch. Now, if we deactivate the scale properties constrain proportion switch here, we can isolate and change just the Z scale, which will make the composition act like an accordion, pushing the layers away from each other or moving them closer together. Pretty cool. An even more dramatic example of this can be seen in this city project that I've got here. I've set up 3D buildings by placing several flat layers up against each other to make a cube-like object. I made several duplicates of the buildings and placed them on a flat street made of solids. As you can see, when I do the same sort of setup that I did in my previous example, I'm able to create a very cool 3D effect in a very simple way just by playing with the Z-Scale. In a situation like this, Z-Scale literally opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Anyway, that's it. Oh, hey, if you're watching this as a podcast and you want to get the project files just so you can see how I did some of this, you can grab them from my personal Creative Cow podcast website at www.allbetsareoff.com forward slash cow. Have fun. This is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.